Good evening, everyone. We'll begin the readout tonight with the anti-democratic soul of the Republican Party. This week will tell us a lot about the future of that party and, frankly, the future of our democracy itself. On Wednesday, it's expected that House Republicans will vote to remove Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney from party leadership for telling the truth in the face of the disgraced former president's big lie. Now, of course, what's left of the formerly grand old party has already made it clear that the big lie is its only organizing principle. A day after endorsing New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik as Cheney's replacement, the Republican leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, said in a letter to colleagues with an ostensibly straight face, unfortunately, each day spent relitigating the past is one day less. We have to seize the future. This is his party is currently relitigating the 2020 election in Arizona for the umpteenth time. Meanwhile, as Kevin looks to oust Liz Cheney for saying exactly what he said after the insurrection that the former president was responsible for the mayhem at the Capitol, McCarthy has completely turned tail to follow his party off the cliff into the MAGA abyss even as the few rational Republicans left are comparing their party to the Titanic. We're like, you know, in this, in the middle of this slow sink, we have a band playing on the deck and telling everybody it's fine. And meanwhile, as I've said, you know, Donald Trump's running around trying to find women's clothing and get on the first lifeboat. It just bothers me that you have to swear fealty to uh, the dear leader or you get kicked out of the party. Well, it's sort of a circular firing squad where we're just attacking members of our own party instead of focusing on solving problems. Well, it's still Donald Trump's party. Uh, it shows that you have to more or less, as everyone is pointing out, you sort of have to be a lie to qualify. You have to lie to qualify to be a Republican. Unlike the supposed House leader, and that does need to be in scare quotes right now, Liz Cheney has been consistent about two things. The first being a dyed-in-the-will right-winger, a war-hawking, tax cuts for the rich-supporting, Black Lives Matter-opposing Republican. And the second, actually thinking we should have a democracy, while the rest of the GOP continues its descent to the point of even misleading their own members. The Washington Post reports that at a retreat in April, when staff from the National Republican Congressional Committee rose to explain the party's latest polling in core battleground districts, they left out a key finding about Trump's weakness. Trump's unfavorable ratings were 15 points higher than his favorable ones in the core districts. The report adds that Cheney was alarmed since Republican campaign officials had similarly left out bad Trump polling news at a retreat in March demonstrating the party's willingness to hide the truth about the former president, even at the peril of its own members, who we'll have to face re-election based on that data. But the fact is, Liz Cheney has already lost the war to a party that doesn't believe in democracy, but rather only in bending the knee to a failed president. And it's clear that Kevin McCarthy is not leading his party. Okay, so who is? That person should not be the spokesperson of the Republican Party. We knew that net then. I'm glad our colleagues have caught up. Maybe we're the leaders, Marjorie. They follow us. Yeah, there you go. Matt Gates, the alleged teeny dater, currently facing an ongoing investigation into whether he sex trafficked a 17 year old kid. And Margie Q. Green, you know, the QAnon curious weirdo who believes Jewish space lasers cause California wildfires. Welcome to your new freak fest of a Republican Party. And let's just be very clear. The freaks are who would hold power if they ever get control of the Senate, the House, or the White House again anytime soon. Kevin McCarthy? Kevin McCarthy is not a leader. He served Trump, and he serves them. Joining me now are Olivia Troy, director at the Republican Accountability Project and former senior aide on the White House Coronavirus Task Force, and Jason Johnson, professor of politics and journalism at Morgan State University. And Olivia, you wrote a piece in USA Today, an op-ed, in which you say Republicans are counting on lies and brute force to win elections, just like they did in 2020. The strategy you wrote is simple. Obfuscate, lie, change the subject, and hope voters hold the other party to a higher standard. It's cynical, un-American, and as exasperating as it may be, effective. The fact that you think that this is actually a potential path back to power is frightening for a lot of reasons, in other, you know, not least of which is that that means Donald Trump would basically be running the House of Representatives if Kevin McCarthy gets back in. He's just a puppet. Um, but what does it say about Republican voters if that's effective? Well, it's certainly concerning. Uh, I think it says that Trumpism has a hold of the country right now. And I think that that is fundamentally what is 
a horrifying and scary prospect. And we've seen what Trumpism does. It creates divisiveness. It creates hatred. We've seen a rise of domestic terrorism under this era. And so fundamentally, it's dangerous. And it's also, as you've so eloquently stated, it is fully undermining of our democracy. And that is why this is so upsetting what's happening with Liz Cheney this week and all of these bad actors that are claiming to be leaders in the Republican Party, because what they are doing is that they're not just infighting within the Republican Party, they're actively destroying the fundamentals of our democracy. And that is why it matters. It matters to all of us that we take a stand against us and we don't stand by while they continue to do this to our country. You know, Jason, it is it is uh, you know odd that neoconservatives used to concern themselves with spreading democracy in the Middle East now have to be like, no, we need to spread democracy at home because our party doesn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And it's beyond what Olivia said about it being dangerous. It's also a freak show. It's not a serious thing. It is a freak show. Let me just play. This is cut one. This is just a sampling of what the Republican Party fundamentally looks like right now. Take a listen. I feel that too many on the left are comfortable with lies and half-truths. Let me tell you one thing. I'm sick of it. Is he a legitimate president as our democracy held? Or do you disagree with that? I believe Joe Biden is our president. And I think legitimately. that you want to... Use the word legitimately. Terry, Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Who is running this country? Who? Because when I look up there on that White House or camp, mm -hmm. I don't see no snipers on the White mm -hmm. House. Did anybody in here vote for Joe Biden? No. Do you guys really think he won? No. Jason Johnson, the prospect of that freak show being in charge of, you know, babysitting my cat, let alone being in charge of the House of Representatives is terrifying to me. Your thoughts? Yeah, but here's the thing, Joy, like this is this is where your conspiracy nonsense gets you. This is where everything that Liz Cheney and all these other people talked about and supported with birtherism, this is where it gets you. It's essentially a crowd of people who said, I've never been to the moon, so how do I know it's not made of green cheese, right? But this is the thing that I think that, that Democrats need to understand. It's both a good thing and a bad thing heading into next year. Everyone who's out there now, whether it's McCarthy or whether it's this crazy carnival with Matt Gates and, and, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Joy, they're all cover bands. They're cover bands. That ain't the real show. It's A. Marie. It's not Beyonce. The Beyonce is Trump. And if Trump is not on the ballot, as much as they want to talk about him, look, I love Yacht Rock as much as the next person, but eventually I want to see Journey, right? Like, you can't keep putting out all these fake Trumpers and think that it's going to work. And the reason we know it doesn't is what we saw in Georgia. When Donald Trump isn't on the ballot, a red state gives you two Democratic voters. So the, the, the thing beneath all of this, Joy, that I find most dangerous is not just the crazies going forward, but it's the legislation to suppress the vote because they know yeah. that none of this crazy gets voters. So it's their voter suppression that's really what they're pushing. Uh, can I just, this is cut forward for my uh, producers. Let's just listen to Trump. Yeah, that, I think that's a very good point. First of all, all the A. Marie fans, I know, she's the, don't, don't listen to Jason Johnson. Please don't at me, at Jason Johnson, <laughs> Dr. Jason Johnson, A. Marie fans. I like her music. Um, here's Donald Trump, and he talks about who, who he says is taking back the House of Representatives. Take a listen. I think we have a really good chance of working with everybody, including Kevin McCarthy, on taking back the House. So, so the, the, the implication there, Olivia, is just as Jason said, they understand Republicans. They, they have no sway over this electorate. Only the Jim Jones of the party does. Only Jim Jones can hand you the Kool-Aid. So what they're all saying is, don't worry, he'll be in charge of the House. He is not an elected official, but isn't it true that if Kevin McCarthy were to ever become speaker, he wouldn't be Nancy Pelosi, who's a boss. He would be the servant of the guy we just saw there, the retiree pretending like he ain't drinking Diet Coke and eating cheeseburgers in Florida. He would be his servant, right? 100%. You're seeing that time and time again. You saw it right after January 6th. You saw him come out and condemn what happened. And then right, literally, right after it, he whitewashes it and goes back to falling in line. And that's what you will get. And that is why McCarthy should not be, Speaker ever again, he should not be running anything. He should be out of office. All of these people are unfit to be in office. They have no integrity. They are not actually trying to govern in the country. They're not pushing policy, right? It's just grievances and now it's lies. That is the Republican Party's platform right now. When you're pushing someone out like Liz Cheney, 
a true conservative by any definition of the word, right? That is who she is. And you're replacing her in a manner where people that are liars are rising within the party. I think that says where the platform of the party is. But I, I'm holding on to hope, Joy, that the voters are going to come through. They see this for what it is. And there is a whole group of former Republicans and moderate Republicans who are not okay with this, who will walk away. And look, if it leads to a blue wave across the country, then rightly so, the GOP deserves it because they have destroyed themselves. You know, Jason, I am in the a small, small camp of people who are not as bearish on Democrats' chances in 2022 as a lot of our friends are, who just assume that because history says Republicans will take over the House and the Senate. I am not as bearish on it because I know some regular order Republicans that are of that other type that just care about tax cuts. And the freak show that I showed you earlier, they're embarrassed by. They find Paris Denard and Diamond and Silk embarrassing. And the idea that they're not even getting Trump now, they're saying you're just going to get that. You, Mitt Romney today, he said, expelling Liz Cheney from leadership won't gain the GOP one additional vote, but it'll ta cost us quite a few. You've, we've got a list here of the people who've been censured and thrown out, you know, from Liz Cheney on down. And I wonder if those people may not have a big constituency, but they might have a little one. They might have a little one who'll say, you know what, I like Larry Hogan. I don't like Trump. And I don't want Trumpy Republicans to be in my district. What do you make of it? Joy, I completely agree with you. Now, look, you know, 22 and 2 is way off. We've got a lot of elections between now and then special elections. But the fact of the matter is the Republican Party, their only chance of winning next year is through voter suppression. Because at the yes. end of the day, they don't have a leader and they don't have a message. And unless Joe Biden manages to ruin the country in the next 18 months, and I find that highly unlikely, you know, Vice President Harris is there helping as well. Unless he ruins the country, they don't have anything to create backlash. There is no Affordable Care Act to get mad at. There is no right. website that people can get mad at. So all they've got is this crazy cavalcade. I don't think their chances are good in 2022. Not if the economy keeps picking up. And, you know, I mean, if, if Republicans were confident, then Ron DeSantis would go ahead and hold that special election and let it fly for Alcee Hastings. They know they've got to keep the, a, a man has passed away. They've got to keep that seat open in order to get back. Right. It's only attrition, attrition of voters. Take voters off the table. They can only win by subtraction, Olivia. And this also scares me because that means there's nothing they wouldn't do to suppress the vote. How much should we be worried about how far they're willing to go to steal elections? Because they know that they can't win them straight up. Well, fundamentally, that's what you're seeing right now. Right? They're not letting go of the past. They still don't acknowledge that Biden is president. We have a lot of Republican voters out there who you know, have registered Republican who are saying they don't see Biden as a legitimate president. That is scary when you see the polling on that because that makes us look like a banana republic at this point. And so I think that is, that is something that is going to be worrisome going into the midterm elections and how we organize. And I honestly, I think it's going to take all of us. We're going to have to unite and really stand against mega together. And whether it's moderate Republican, public gender right, we're going to have to come together and counter this. It's almost like there are two parties, Jason. There's the shots, the shots and checks party, and there's the freaks. That, that seems like a pretty simple message to me for Democrats. It's shots and checks or freaks. <laughs> Your thoughts? Well, it, yeah, I mean, it's... It's, be, it's beyond freaks. Look, I mean, all I have to say is cyber ninja. Like, Republicans in Arizona have put a recount in the name of something that should be like my 14-year-old nephew's name when he's playing games online. They take something like cyber ninja seriously. The Democratic Party, this is theirs to lose. You are running against a party of insurrectionists, violent maniacs, and non-policy. That is it. If you can't sell it under those circumstances, then you don't deserve to stay in power. Like, I, I don't see how the Republican Party turns it around anytime soon. They tried, uh, you know, they, they tried with Tim Scott. They're going to try with DeSantis. Neither of those guys has as much charisma as your average insurance salesman. So they have to do a freak show because otherwise there will be no reason to pay attention to any of them. And until Tucker decides he wants to run for president, they don't even have anybody to bring into the TV. And I, I'm saying, J Jason, I'm glad I'm not alone in this. And Olivia, I'm glad that I'm not alone in thinking like this. Because if they thought they were in a good position, they wouldn't lie to their own members about the polling data. If they thought they were in good spot, they would tell the truth about the polling data. Okay. Olivia Troy, exactly. Jason Johnson, thank you both very much. Up next.